Okay, we're now joined by the Bushlight Poll Award winner, Kyle Larson. Uh, if you have a qu question for Kyle, please uh, raise your hand. We'll get you a mic. We'll start off, Kyle, just op opening thoughts, what this poll means for tomorrow's race. Yeah, it uh, it means a lot, I think. You know, qualifying's really important here. Uh, we got the poll in 21, and that really, you know, helped us win the championship race. Um, you know, Joey had an extremely fast car in the fall last year, but, you know, he got the poll as well and, and won. So I think that number one pit stall means a lot. So uh, happy to be quick this weekend and quick in practice and have it translate to qualifying. Beautiful. If you have a question for Kyle, please raise your hand. We'll get you a mic. Let's we'll start us off. Start up here to the right. Coop Online.com. Talking to Brad Kislowski, he said it's not a surprise that you are on the pole position and been the fast this weekend. Uh, the cars are really slipping and sliding in the corners. And does that play into your dirt background, or is it just you have a fast car this weekend? Um, I honestly, I think we're all so good at this level that it, it doesn't, once you get to this level, I don't think it really matters, like your background. I, and, and two, I think our team brought a really good car because I can't honestly tell the difference um, in aero packages. So I think that just shows you know, how they did their homework and um, brought a great car here. So I, I felt like William was really good yesterday in practice as well, and, and you know, he qualified third. And I think you know, I look at him as being one of the guys to beat, al along with you know, Harvick, who you know, I would say maybe with him, like he was always good here with the lower downforce stuff. And you know, the last you know, few years, he hasn't been as dominant. And, and he showed in practice yesterday that he was really good. So, I mean, maybe there's something to it, but I don't really feel any different. So um, I think it's more just my car is good. We'll go to Dominic, then Reed, then Bob. Dominic Otto going with the racing experts in ESPN Radio, Albuquerque. Just as you were progressing through qualifying there, round one, round two, how confident were you that you could sit on the pole? Um, well, I didn't expect to lay down the lap that I did the first round. Um, yeah, I, I felt like you were going to have a good shot to be the in the final you know, round, the top five of the uh, Group B. And all those guys ran 60s, so um, I was like, man, I, it's tight. You know, I got to put a good lap down here and – uh, we were able to go, I don't know, like three-tenths quicker or something. So then I, I was really confident going in the next round. Um, but then you get, you know, talking to yourself, and you're like, man, did I overuse the tires there in the first round? Am I going to have enough for the next round? I'm in Group B versus Group A. Their tires are cooler. So you're, like, trying to talk yourself out of it. But um, it was obviously much closer gap. You know, I, I lost those three-tenths that I had the first round. And, um, and you know, I, you, can feel, you can feel that time. You know, I got a little bit loose into one, and, had to wait a little bit longer than I wanted to on the throttle. I didn't hit the chip long down the back stretch like I did the first time. I overslowed into three. Um, so then you, you know, I got a good exit. Then you're just like staring at your <laughs> at your lap time on the dash, waiting for it to pop up a good lap. And I saw the 60, and, and I knew that we got the pole. So, but yeah, I mean, you're trying to kind of talk yourself out of it a little bit while you're sitting on pit road. Reed, uh, Reed Spencer with NASCAR Wire. Um, where do you think your advantage is? I mean, you led practice, you led both rounds of qualifying. Where do you think you're beating everybody else? Uh, looking at SMT, I felt like um, my ability to uh, roll some center corner speed in one and two um, kind of gave me a little bit of an advantage. Uh, there's definitely some cars that are better than me in three and four, but um, you were also competitive over there too. So I feel like there's a lot of room behind the wheel to get a lot better in three and four. I think my car is fine. I just think I need to do some things different and, and get even better in three and four, and, and then we should be really good. Up to Bob. I'm Bob Pockers, Fox Sports. I have two. The first is you said you expected no difference from yesterday, so is it, I assume it felt just like it did yesterday for the most part. Uh, car, the car, yeah. I mean, qualifying trim, I feel like you always have more grip. So I felt my first round especially felt very, very good. Um, the next round, I lost grip and was kind of slipping and sliding a little bit more, but I also did uh, in the fall. You know, first round and second round, I slipped more. And your organization wasn't part of the test here in January. Um, Denny didn't test, but his organization was, and most of the teams in the top 10, except for maybe one, had somebody here at the test. So I'm curious, if were you concerned at all coming in that you guys weren't part of this test, that you would be behind maybe by a tick uh i don't i can't speak for like cliff and everybody but um me personally yes i was concerned because 
Um, I had heard that the lower downforce hurt the Chevys more aerodynamically than the other manufacturers. Um, Ross, from what everybody told me, was terrible <laughs> once they went to this low downforce stuff or something similar to this at the test. So, uh, and, and Ross was really good in the fall. So, um, honestly, Ross was great everywhere last year and, and great here both races. So, yes, I was concerned. I didn't expect to be you know, top of the charts both days. But uh, you, after the long run that we made, the first run of practice, I was like, okay, our, our times look really good all throughout the 30 laps that I ran. And um, so, yeah, I think you know, that kind of changes your opinion uh, pretty quickly after you look at the, the lap tracker. Um, obviously, I knew I was quickest, but you know, one lap doesn't really matter in practice. So, um, but no, I'm just, I'm just happy that uh, our team obviously did some good homework and um, prepared a, a great, you know, setup car. Any more questions for Kyle? Kyle, with the dirt track background and how many fans came over uh, with you and excited to see um, their, their return to the NASCAR track because they had seen you racing on the dirt tracks, uh, talk about um, the F1 drivers coming over and the two guys, the former world champions that are going to be racing at Coda. Is that exciting for you to see them come over and does that light your fuse for your future? Uh, I don't, I wouldn't say it lights my fuse anymore for my future, but um, it's really exciting to, to have guys of that caliber resume um, come and compete in the NASCAR Cup Series. I think it, it's, uh, it's great for our sport. And, and two, I think it's going to showcase how tough our sport is. Um, you know, there, I, I, I don't know who Jensen's running for, but <clears throat> Kimmy, you know, in a track house car, that's, I mean, they won two road course races last year. So um, there's no arguing that he's not in great equipment. So you, know, if he does good or, or average or whatever, I think it, it shows the competition level of our sport, which I believe is the toughest in the world. So, um, yeah, it's exciting to have them, uh, you know, having guys like Connor Daly, Travis Pastrana, Jonathan Davenport. It's not – it's more than just the Formula One drivers, too. It, I think it just – showcases how diverse our sport is and how diverse this car has allowed our sport to be. So um, it's neat. And, it, and it's, it's yes, it's not what they're, you know, grew up doing, racing a heavy stock car. But it for us, you, you can kind of measure yourself a little bit. And you can learn a lot. You know, we have a lot of data to look at that uh, we can study a guy who strictly grew up open wheel road course racing. Um, and see kind of how their driving style is different and, and how we can apply some of what they do to, to our style. Lee in the back. Kyle, now that you live out here part of the time, does it give you any more connection to the track or do you, you know, you feel any more connected to the track? Um, I mean, maybe, yeah, I guess. I got to sleep in my own bed <laughs> last night and tonight, so. Um, I've always liked coming here, though, even before I owned a house here. So I don't feel more connected, I guess. But um, it's just it's just nice having somewhere to go. And but we, we typically would always rent a house, or, or Denny usually rents a house, and so we would you know split the cost and stay with him. So um, I always look forward to this race uh, because of that. And it was kind of a vacation in a way, and and now it's a, a full time not full time vacation, but like a you know. A, Snowbirds, I guess we are. So, um, no, it's been good and um, enjoy it. The kids love it, and I uh, got my family here, so it's great. Any final questions for Kyle? All right, we'll wrap up back. <laughs> <laughs> JP with Kyle Larson Racing. Uh, there were some false accusations I heard in Denny's post race about pickleball. Could could you verify on that? <laughs> I, I, according to, according, yes, so according to, I don't know, I haven't heard it yet, so you guys have to correct me if I'm wrong, but Jamie Little said that Denny said that he beat me in pickleball this week, so that's fake news, by the way, you guys can all report that, beat him in my first ever pickleball match, um, and he's been playing for years, so I plan on beating him here again in a couple hours. Congratulations on that. <laughs>